Hello and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, my name is Pixel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Valheim running at 1440p on our Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6700 XT graphics card alongside the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X CPU. Now, unfortunately, whilst I've been able to watch Valheim's meteoric rise from the sidelines, I'd not actually had the time to get hands on with it until making this video. That means that all the footage that you're about to see has been taken from the first few hours of play. Normally, I like to be able to see the majority of a game before producing one of these videos, simply so that I can be extremely confident that the performance that I demonstrate is indeed going to be mostly representative of the full experience. That said, since this is pretty much an open world survival game, I do believe that the performance in this video should be fairly accurate to the majority of the overall game. After all, during the first boss fight when the screen gets covered in all sorts of flashy effects, our frame rate stayed in line with our averages which indicates to me a rather stable baseline for performance. Settings wise, we went for the Vulkan API and had most of the available settings maxed out barring draw distance which we left on the default high setting and shadow quality which we lowered to medium from high. Oh, and we also disabled depth of field but this was due to personal preference rather than performance. At these settings, our frame rate would mostly stick between around 80 and 120 when out in the open world and much higher when exploring the game's more enclosed areas. Thankfully, despite the large variance in frame rate, mouse input did manage to feel fairly responsive whilst playing on my freezing compatible monitor. The only real blemish when it comes to performance is that from time to time the game can hit periods of stutter. Whilst these aren't all that common, they do appear to get worse over longer play sessions. This appears to happen on all GPU and CPU combos and so is looking likely to be something inherent to the game that can hopefully be reduced in future patches. It's by no means awful, but it's certainly noticeable when it does happen. Also, when attempting to run the game with the graphical settings completely maxed out, meaning draw distance at very high and shadows at high, the game was extremely heavy. Heavy to the point where our 80 to 120 FPS average would be pretty much half to somewhere between 40 and 80, whilst there only being a relatively small difference in the overall visual presentation. Talking about the visuals, I personally find that blend between the old school PlayStation styled aesthetic and modern high end features incredibly cool and interesting. Not only does the game often manage to look truly stunning in spite of its lo-fi presentation, but I can only imagine how much going for this art style helps speed up development. Whilst it's fairly common these days for smaller teams to embrace retro inspired graphics, most of these teams fully commit, or at least attempt, to emulate retro graphics verbatim, resulting in storefronts being flooded with similar looking games that either push too hard and lose their authenticity, or still manage to fall short and end up playing second fiddle to games literally released decades ago. Don't get me wrong, sometimes developers do nail it, such as is the case with Shovel Knight and Dusk, but more often than not, they don't, and even when they do, they're often seen as throwbacks rather than something that is fresh and new. To be clear, this is by no means a dig, I personally love these types of games, it's just I love them partly because of their retroness, not in spite of it. Valheim on the other hand may borrow heavily from the retro inspired palettes, but it still manages to present as a fairly modern game. I personally love the contrast between the low poly assets and super modern particle effects and volumetrics. The way the grass and trees sway in the wind looks awesome and the density of the world in general is very impressive. Granted, I can appreciate why many gamers are accusing the game of being unoptimized, especially when you take the visuals at face value, but honestly, based on the high end effects presence combined with the density, I'm actually rather surprised that it manages to run as well as it does, especially when you take into consideration the size of the team that made it. It's not like we are looking at a game developed by a massive AAA studio with dozens of specialized engineers on payroll. Valheim was primarily developed by five people, which surprisingly means that as of two weeks ago, they have sold over a million copies per member of staff. If by chance this is the first that you're seeing of the game, I definitely recommend that you check out a couple of reviews and maybe even consider picking it up for yourselves. In a world jam packed with open world survival games, Valheim has managed to secure its place at the head of the table and based on what I've played, it's easy to see why. With all that said, this has just been me checking out Valheim on our Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6700ST graphics card, so thank you so much for watching. If you were new around here, please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so that you'll get notified of our future videos. If you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, then let me know in the comment section down below and I will try and get back to you. 
For now though, from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thanks again for watching and until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye bye.